Hello and good morning. Today I want to talk about Kiva. Common Rider Kiva is my favorite Common Rider show. It might have a little bit of a weaker story than other ones, but it has the best designs and the coolest monsters, and I really like the way the story is told across two different timelines and and uh, vampire themes, and so that's always cool. Here we have SIC Kiva and Sochaku Henshin Kiva. Let's start with Sochaku Henshin, SH Kiva. Sochaku Henshin, as far as I know, is the line that immediately predated SH Figure Arts. It became SH Figure Arts. And the later series, such as Kiva and Denno, were quite good. Not quite as good as Figure Arts, but pretty close. Um, as a quick comparison, here is uh, Ixa. So, SH Figure Arts Ixa from Kiva. Another great design. Just look at that thing. It's cool. Uh, the posability of the SH Kiva is very close to the figure arts. Uh, the, the main uh, differences and shortcomings are in the ankles. This has a nice hinged in multiple ways ankle joint, um, which allows for a lot of great stability and in interesting poses which you can't see because I have it camera in the wrong spot. <clears throat> um, but SH Kiva has some pretty simple... Uh, it's a simple ball joint, which it's still not terrible. And I'm sure my hand was right in the way there. It's not terrible, but it's not going to get as deep of a pose as Ixa can do. He can turn his ankles... Oh, that one is tight. He can turn his ankles quite far down. So he's nice and stable. The other major shortcoming is the the way the shoulder pads attach. I think they did a really great job with Kiva. The way it's got a hinge in the back here so it can slide out of the way and it also is hinged up there so it can go up. So it still does pretty good. It just starts to look funny sooner then figure arts, most of which are anchored at the top of the shoulder joint, so they rotate with the shoulder and get out of the way completely. And his does that funny flipping thing. But that's because of the design of the figure, of the suit, rather. Um, other than that, it has double-jointed knees, which get nice and deep. Um, he has pretty good hip and thigh swivels. Double elbows. If we get that out of the way, you can see he's got a ball jointed shoulder. Well, I guess it's not really a ball joint. Whatever that is, lots of movement. There's an inner ball that also moves around. Um, <clears throat> and depending on which hands you have, it has a wrist hinge and swivel because it is a peg wrist. So it's it's very close to VRs. Oh. Uh, waist, ab crunch, neck. Uh, I think it's probably on a ball joint. This is a little bit hard to move. <clears throat> it's actually got a joint down at the base of the neck as well as one at the top of the neck. <coughs> Excuse me. SH Kiva comes with four pairs of hands. Big old splayed hands. A pair of punching fists with hinge wrist. A pair of Holding things hands, also with a hinged wrist, I guess I'll... Ah, this one does not have the hinged wrist, but this has hinged fingers instead, so he can kind of close his fingers. Kiva comes with no other accessories. He doesn't need anything to hold, and so really punching fists is all he needs. Kiva often does a sort of... Spider-Man hands pose a lot, and that is the biggest shortcoming with this figure, in my opinion. He does not have hands like that, kind of like these, because that's his signature posing. So that's the biggest shortcoming. 
Um, I guess you can consider some other accessories. These pop off his belt, and they're not sculpted on here, but they would hold fessels. He's got one on each side, because he holds three on each side of his belt. Kivat is removable. Kivat is metal. I don't know if you can quite tell from that. It's nicely painted. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit on him. Got lots of nice paint. Pretty show accurate. I like it. Can't quite stand up by itself, but that plug gives it a little something to lean on. So we can kind of stay up. Not really. The armor is removable. This front piece pops open on the hinge. And then if you can squiggle his arms out of the way, it pops off. The shoulder armor is removable. That's how it gets a little hinge joint there. So this whole back piece with its nice sculpting, nice detail on there, it might be hard to see because of the reflections of the light, it's very shiny chrome. It is metal. It is hefty. And that's cool. I was really excited when I got this figure and saw how good it was. Sure, he looks a little weird without his armor. But it looks right with the armor. Of course, I'm not going to ever take it off, really. But it's still kind of neat that it does that. Um, but yeah, this is a great figure. It's too bad we don't have a real... SH Figure Arts Kiva yet, but this SH Kiva is a good stand-in. It does almost everything I would want it to do, and it looks pretty good. Two more things that are removable, so you could, or one more thing that's removable, so you could call it an accessory. He's got a cap on his foot, and these knee things, knee pads, are also metal, as is this shin armor on his right shin. Now why does he do that? Or have that? Because Kiva's first finishing move is crazy cool. Pop that off and open this to approximate the wings that those open up into so he can do his wake up kick. And his ab is, yeah, ab waist is a little bit looser than I would like, but um, he can do his wake up pose thanks to this Tamashi stage that I bought separately from this figure. Just showed up a couple days ago, actually. Oh no, it's loosened. It's not going to hold him. And fly up over the moon and do a cool pose and fly back down and kick a fangire to death. Um, SH Kiva is awesome. I will be first in line when they make a figure arts Kiva, but until that day, I am happy with this one. Um, also, pluses is they did his other three main forms in that line, and I'll review those someday. Let's turn our attention to SIC Kiva. And why did the throw all the white balance off or something? I love the SIC figures. I have all of the double figures, most of the Deno figures, and I am missing I have two of the four Kiva figures. They are great. They are more stylized looks at the characters. This one is much closer to show accurate. It has some drawbacks, but it's you know, not stylized. It's accurate-ish. Whereas SIC Kiva is a more stylized look at the figure. His face is exaggerated more. It's not... Um, what do I want to say? I don't know, it's just excessively detailed, which I really like. It's got all sorts of neat detailing in the head. 
Um, they've even added little ears or wings or something on the back of his eyes. Um, unlike most figure arts, this does not have clear translucent eye things over a nice compound effect, but this one does. Look at that. His eyes are translucent yellow. Uh, you can see that Kivat is hyper detailed, hyper stylized. Uh, this guy is also hefty. He's got a lot of metal. Again, the knee pads, again, the shin guards, um, the one on his foot is as well. His armor, which is not removable. I think only the shoulder ones are. But he's got real chains on him. Same with his foot. The posability is not quite as as good as the SH version, but it's close. He's still got double jointed knees. He's got better ankles with hinges and rotates and a toe joint and again double elbows. Now his shoulder pieces don't move out of the way as much as that one, but then they also don't mess up the look as much. They do just kind of rotate a little bit here and there. They don't really lift up. That's the main difference. And they're, they're hinged way down here, so they can't lift up a whole lot to get out of the way. So he can't lift up his arms over his head, but that one can. He's got wrist turns and hinges. And ball joint, and again, neck down at the bottom. His head is a lot more expressive than SH Kiva's. Uh, again, did I say ab thing? And I think there's a waist in there that might just be kind of hard to grab. Now, this guy is loaded with accessories. Crazy number of accessories. That's one of the things I both like and sometimes is not as great as I would hope it would be with the SA, SIC line. Uh, let's see what he has here. He's got hands. He's got punching things hands. He's got gripping things hands. Uh, should be two of those. This one's slightly different. We'll get to that. He's got um, relaxed dish, open dish hands. And then he has his signature slightly devil horns, slightly Spider-Man looking hands. So he can cross them in front of his chest like he does. He also has a, I don't know why, but there is a completely uh, metal, unpainted Kivat in belt mode. You can pop this one off and replace it. I guess if you don't want a big yellow belt, you can have a metal silver belt. It looks alright, actually, but it's not accurate, so I don't know why it's there. Um, this one is plastic, though, and that one is metal. Isn't that exciting? He's also got this more different Turkiva, Kivat, rather, with his wings out and a much more rounder head rather than this one that's flat. Uh, through the use of a removable peg back there, this Kivat can also attach to his belt. It looks a little less integrated, but at the same time is also kind of cool. I feel like it's not lit enough, but it's hard to tell on this tiny little screen. Now let's change the wrist really quick, <clears throat> the hands, because they just pop out their straight peg. That's the left hand. And I don't know which way this is supposed to go on, one way or the other. Now his shoulder joints are a little hard to maneuver quite where I want. And the armor kind of gets in the way a little bit. But he can still kind of do his, his contemplative quick, I'm going to beat you up mode. I love this figure. It's so gorgeous. Um, what else? 
Should we go into his wake up a kick? Oh, let's talk about these. The things on the belt are not removable, like they were on the SH version, but this one has fuessels, which are whistle things that you put in Kivat's mouth to summon his extra powers. So with that, Kivat, you could pop this little itty bitty tiny Garulu Fuessel out, and you can even plug it in there. Maybe my hands are a little bit too clumsy, but and it's so tiny and hard to see. But look, there's a Fuessel in there, and then he can blow it, and he turns into Garulu over him with a blue arm and a sword and. More than almost anything else in the world, I wish Bandai would release the rest of the forms in SIC, Garulu, Masha, and Daga. Doga? Daga? I don't remember how they pronounce it. Make it a form changeable one. I don't care. I would buy it four times, three times, so I can have all of his forms, because I like them, and this is a great figure, and I'd love to have it in the other modes. Let's put that back. So it's got those three fuessels. It also has the finishing move ones. Wake up. I don't remember, and I don't remember, because they only used each of those once, maybe twice. They used wake up a bunch, though. Well, look, he can do wake up, too. His other two accessories are big, giant, translucent -y red bat wing things. So you unhook the chain... You break the chain, if you will. Ha ha ha. Which, if you haven't seen Kinova, you probably won't get that. Come on, come on. There we go. Break the chain, unwrap it. And then this flies off into three different pieces that are all heavy because they're metal. And you get the nice detailed paintwork. There is my hand completely blocking the light. Metallic green, circles, eye-looking things, and then you plug these cool bat wings in. And they are not quite as secure when they plug in as they could be. Maybe I just didn't have it in all the way. Look at that. How awesome. I think I can zoom in with this. Uh, or maybe not. Anyway. And then he can also go and do a cool... I'm going to fly up in the air and kick a Fangire to death. Let's see if this stand stayed tight to her. I'll have to pull out a screwdriver and tighten the stand a little bit. I don't want to. Alright, I will... There we go. Oh hey, where's the memory? He does that, and he flies over the moon, and he kicks you, and you die, if you're a fan guy. So, Kiva, awesome. Oh, and one more very, very important accessory. Wataru, Wataru Kurenai, who is Kamen Rider Kiva, is a violinist. And his father before him was a violinist, and he, his father, Otoya, built... A violin called the Bloody Rose. And the Bloody Rose um, has some mystical power that I don't remember exactly how they explained it. But it knows when there are Fangire about. So Kiva comes with the Bloody Rose with its weird little head instead of the scroll at the end. And he can even hold it. He can even hold it in a decent enough approximation for how a violinist would hold it. Um, 
in the opening credits, you see Kiva in in costume playing a violin. Um, I think it would be a little bit difficult to actually play in this armor, because how do you hold it against your chin? You've got that big shoulder thingy and the collar. But uh, anyway, it's it's neat that he can do this. I don't know if I'll be able to get this in from this angle, but it's one of the things I found interesting. There he is, sort of holding the violin properly. Not really, but it actually doesn't look too bad from this angle. Um, but anyway, the point is that SIC Kiva is completely awesome, and he is definitely one of the best and most favorite figures that I own. Uh, there is still an Ixa Dark Kiva set I need to get. Um, I do have the very exclusive Emperor Kiva SIC figure, which cost me a lot of money, and I was actually a little bit disappointed with it, but uh, I'm still glad I have it, and I may like it more if I actually get around and play with it. But anyway, um, SIC Kiva. The only thing wrong with this figure is that it does not exist in the Garolu, Basha, and Doga forms. I really, really wish it did. Um, especially Garolu form, that's my favorite one. After Kiva. So, definitely recommend both of these figures if you're into Kiva. Um, and if you're not, I suggest you go check it out. It's I thought it's a good show. Anyway. Kiva. I love it.